What's up guys? So, a lot of people have been messaging me lately asking me how do I practice coin magic? Or what should I practice? How long should I practice? These are questions you're going to start asking yourself the deeper you get into studying coin magic. So, I've got some interesting advice and tips as it relates to learning guitar or any other instrument. So I'm going to teach you some drills and a one coin routine I developed just for this video. So grab a coin and join me as we dive into some practice. Greetings and welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. If this is your first time watching, be sure to check out some of my other videos where I give advice and tips on different vanishes. I even teach some of my own stuff. And I talk about different resources, books, and videos to help you get a better start in coin magic. But before we get into that, I want to make a big announcement. Uh, I've put together a just simple website where I'm going to be putting up my own stuff for sale. Right now I've got the ebook up there, Trip and the project I did with Jeff Copeland, uh, Sly Palm. So you can go there now and purchase those directly from me. And I'm working on new projects to put up there in the next coming months. And this is a way for me to generate some money during this time and uh, as an independent creator with no one else involved and you can know that you're supporting me directly and my family. You know, this is for for real grocery money, gas money, you know, real support. So go to rickholcomb.bigcartel.com. And like I said, right now there's just the two products, but I'm working right now on filming something and don't know how soon it'll be up, but uh, I'm gonna keep putting stuff up there. So go check that out now. So today I wanted to talk about practicing coin magic. Now practice can be such a unique thing for each person. We all learn at different speeds and we all excel with different techniques. And it got me thinking about when I started learning guitar uh, over 25 years ago. Hopefully I look younger than I am, but uh, I remember beginning guitar and how excited I was and how frustrated I was. Because my first guitar lesson, all I learned were these drills. Going up and down each string and getting my left hand to do one thing and my right hand to do another thing and it was extremely boring. But all I wanted to do was learn my favorite songs and be able to play along to that album. So after school every day I would go through these drills and after a while I started becoming faster and faster. And then it became fun, almost a game, to see how fast I could go through all these drills. And then as time progressed, I, I learned actual scales. And it was at that point I realized, oh, those drills had a purpose. And now these scales were easy to transition into. And it was now starting to be more fun because actual musical scales sound a lot better and are more fun to play than these chromatic drills where you're focusing on cleanliness and speed. And at the same time, I was learning all my chords and getting better at transitioning from one to the next and to the next. And before long, I was able to play these songs I loved so much. I'd put, I'd put the CD player on and just play along. It was also at that point where I grew the most. I, I had taken all these little lessons and these exercises and I wanted to play these songs so badly, I stopped practicing the drills and I started practicing the songs every day after school. And before long, I was wanting to learn more songs and I was just going off. So my main point with all this is we all learn at a different pace and with different techniques, depending on who you are. So I wanted to go over a quick drill you can practice just for palming. And this isn't all the palms, but it's a good number of palms that will get you going with whatever you want to do. So we're going to go from classic palm to finger palm to nowhere palm 
into second finger curl palm, to JW grip, to edge grip, to downs palm, to thumb palm, then to balance palm, then to back thumb palm, and recover. So you can cycle through this over and over and it's just a circle of movements. And you can do this in front of the mirror or as you're walking around. I'm in the grocery store with a coin in my hand and I'm working through all these just to fiddle with. So we're gonna be starting out in classic palm. Now as you're practicing, you're facing the mirror this way or if you're filming yourself, the camera will be uh, facing you this way. So at with each palm, uh, make note of where your best angles are. What's your range of movement for each one? So with classic palm, you wanna keep your hands mainly downward, your palms downward, or hanging at your side. Now you can come palm up as long as you're aware of the webbing uh, between your thumb and your hand. This is Caps Molini subtlety. And you might find it uh, beneficial to slightly turn a degree or two to your left to make sure that's hidden. So in classic palm, you, you can be down and then come up and show your hands pretty convincingly empty. So we're going from classic palm, the hand drops to the side where the coin is allowed to fall to finger palm. Now one note on finger palm, in bobos it's taught to be held with the ring finger and middle finger, but this is a slightly awkward look for the hand. I find it looks much better if just held with the ring finger. That way the fingers stagger a little bit or step out, which is a much more natural look if the hand had nothing in it. So from classic palm, dropping down, the coin falls out into finger palm, grip only with your ring finger, and you can come up in a Ramsey subtlety. Now the hand drops down to the side, and it's just a matter of the ring finger pushing that coin into a horizontal position so the ring finger can regrip, and we're a nowhere palm. Now, please avoid this look. If you're going to gesture with nowhere palm, just come up like this really quick. Uh, a lot of people like to pose in nowhere palm. This is convincing. <laughs> so we're in nowhere palm, drop down, the coin falls flat again. Now we're gonna pivot in the other direction. So this time the ring finger raises, the thumb can assist a little as the middle finger regrips. We're in second finger curl palm. From here, the thumb can come under the coin and lift it under the index finger to a JW grip. Now the thumb comes along the side, a little back from the center line, and that coin can roll forward into edge grip. Now it's just a matter of clenching that coin with the index and middle finger and coming all the way back this time to Downs Palm. From here, the thumb squeezes in until the coin slips off the skin and snaps into Thumb Palm. And the hand can drop down to the side again as the middle finger comes behind the coin. And as you come up, uh, the thumb can release because gravity is holding the coin on the middle finger. The thumb comes underneath and the coin is scooched into a balance palm. From here, the thumb clamps down on the, the very edge of the coin and then drags back, keeping full contact with the hand so none of the coin is peeking through. Now we're in back thumb palm. For the recovery, just dropping and opening the thumb. And that coin will fall right onto your fingers. So you're dropping, 
opening your thumb. But don't drop it on the floor. <laughs> so all together, classic palm, finger palm, nowhere palm, second finger curl palm, JW, edge grip, down, thumb palm, balance palm, back thumb palm, and recovery. And you can just cycle through this over and over. Classic. Finger palm. Nowhere palm. Second finger curl. JW. Edge grip. Down. Thumb palm. Balance palm. Back thumb palm. So that's a nice little drill you can practice just to get if you're, if you're still struggling maybe with the palms, you know, doing this drill over and over is going to get you really comfortable going back and forth between all these palms. And then as you incorporate different vanishes, well, fake puts and fake takes and different methods to get to vanishes, then you'll start really just connecting things and putting things together. So another great way to practice or exercise is a one coin routine. Not only is it a, a good method of, pra of exercising, it's also a good method to exercise your creativity because you can build a, dozens of one coin routines using different techniques. So if you're working on a specific slight, you can plug that into a little sequence that you've already built and it'll help you smooth out that slight because you want to work on the moment before you execute that and then the moment after you've already executed it and going into the next slight or palm adjustment. So let's go over this one coin routine. You're going to start out with the coin and classic palm. So you come out of your pocket. And another point I want to make, uh, this could be something you actually perform. So it, it's a performance piece and it's a little exercise that you do just to stay smooth. So that's what's cool about it. So this could have patter or not, but I'm just going to wing it here because I put this together just for this video. So here it is. Uh, you have a coin and classic palm. You might be in your pockets. I want to show you something uh, here. That's weird. Uh, here, let's, let's do this. Uh, huh? I think it's right there. Let me just brush it off. There we go. It's really strange. How it just comes and goes. So, there it is. Sometimes it's so small, it's, it's hard to really see. Oh. <laughs> there it goes. Here, watch. I wonder if it can fit between the threads of my pants. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, so that's the basic idea. And like I said, you can work through bobos and piece these ideas together. This vanish and that vanish. and See where you end up after doing a vanish and what might fit after that or you might want to specifically work on a number of things. So plug those together and see how you can get from A to B to C to D. And then use that little routine as your exercise. So here's a close up view of that one coin routine. So you're starting in a classic palm. You begin by, you know, maybe that coin is already in your pocket. So you're digging around and you say to the spectator, uh, let me show you something. They don't know what's about to happen. You've got that classic palm. Let me uh, show you something. So start off with a simple wash. Now this isn't some elaborate, you know, wash. It's one little pass. So the coin is in classic palm. You begin somewhat pointed to the left and you're just going to come over your left hand 
the right thumb on top. Pass in front of your left fingertips as you come over. And at this point, your body's rotating. And at about center, that coin gets dropped off on the left fingertips. And as you continue to swing to the right, the right hand turns palm up. And now the left thumb is on top. And that comes down. So all together, you're here. Wipe, turn, drop, palm up right hand, and then the left hand comes down. So you're here, and then there. Then you reach out into the air, or maybe off of their shirt, or your shirt, or a little piece of nothing. And you're going to do a shuttle pass with nothing. So the left hand is at your side at this point, after the wash. And just the act of swinging the left hand up and the tossing motion of the right hand, it's going to give that coin a little bit of momentum. So it'll just flop over and create the illusion that it materialized in the air. So just like that. Now I came up with this move over 10 years ago. If you look at the first video, I think in my YouTube channel, you can see this one coin routine I came up with back then. And I don't know if it's an original move, but I thought it was a, a fun way to produce a coin. Just grabbing nothing and having it, boom, just materialize. And what sells it is this little animation. Like it appears to be falling into the left hand, even though it began in the left hand. So from the start, we're we're here, here, left hand drops as you reach out, you throw that. Now the coin goes back into the right hand as I do a little coin roll, just to kind of continue the movement that we've created, toss it back, keep it moving. Now you can find plenty of tutorials uh, about the coin roll. I don't have many tips on that. Uh, the one thing that might help you is instead of having or trying to get the coin to roll in a straight line this way, picture a line from your first knuckle to your pinky's second knuckle. So the coin's not staying on this path, but going down this path. Because ultimately you want to catch the coin on the last flop. You want to catch it on that knuckle of the pinky. So as you practice, just picture a line going diagonally and not straight across your knuckles. And that might uh, give you some help with learning that. So do the coin roll, allow it to fall back into the left hand. Now we're just going to do a simple fake take. So we're going to mimic the actions of picking up the coin like this but the right hand is just uh, got the thumb planted on the fingers and we're going to come over that coin and as the right hand comes away the left hand is killing the view of that so we're here and your whole body turns to the right and you're you're looking at what's supposed to be the coin in this hand you immediately toss up and your eyes follow the coin in the air at the same time, both hands meet at the waist and the right hand is going to steal the coin into a thumb palm. Now this is just a matter of the friction of your thumb tip dragging that out enough so that it can nip that coin away. So we fake take, throw that in the air, keep your eyes in the air as your hands meet. You're going to slide that out, nip it away into a thumb palm. And then your eyes come back down as you turn to the left and look at your left hand. Meanwhile, your right hand has dropped with the coin and thumb palm. And you're going to let that roll over and then go into nowhere palm. This is very similar to moves in the drill we used. 
So at your side, you're here, then nowhere palm. So you're looking at your empty left hand, then bring both hands up. So I don't know. You pretend to see it in the air. So you grab at something, take that with the left hand. And now to produce the coin, we're just gonna come in front and the left fingertips are just gonna grab that coin. And then you brush downward as if you're brushing off the invisibility and produce the coin. From here, I allow it to fall into my left palm and we're gonna do kind of a spider grip vanish, but just from the palm. So normally the spider grip vanish is done from spellbound position with this deliberate, weird looking uh, take. It's meant to be a sucker vanish, but we're gonna downplay that somewhat here. So the coin is in your left palm. Your right hand actually takes the coin as your left hand closes at the same time. Your right hand dips as it classic palms, and then you throw that in the air. Your eyes follow, your right hand drops, and then you look back down at your empty left hand. Now we're gonna do that, that same wash again from the beginning. So remember you're swinging from left to right at the finish. Then gesture with your right hand as you notice something on your sleeve. Now you're going to do this, this classic move of producing the coin at the sleeve. Now all that's happening is the coin is uh, in the middle of your fingers with your thumb holding it. You're going to use your index finger to grab a bit of material. This allows you to push the coin out and it's still being hidden because of the material that you're pulling out. So you're coming up. Once you get some material, your thumb is pushing that coin behind. Now you have it by your fingertips and it can pop into view. From here, you're gonna come outward with uh, your palm outward, right hand. Take the coin here, turn your palm up. Do the same thing with the left hand. Turn that palm up. Then again with the right hand, palm up. Now this time we're gonna do a fake take. The left hand fakes as the right hand turns away to kill the view. And it's gonna classic palm the coin. It has to be classic palm by the time the left hand rotates up. Because now we're gonna continue the motion, but with nothing at the fingertips. So, we're selling the idea that the coin is maybe diminishing in size. We're squishing it down. So we're here, fake, continue, then finish with your left hand holding nothing. From here, we're gonna do uh, an easy muscle pass. This is a good way to practice the muscle pass. So you're gonna come over to grab that piece of nothing. As soon as the left, the right fingertips are in front, you're just gonna squeeze that coin till it pops out and come away with that. So like I said, it's an easy way to start using the muscle pass for something other than this gravity coin thing. So we're here, muscle pass, come away. The left hand drops after the right hand takes. And if you're a little bit afraid of the muscle pass, you can just drop that coin. Even the momentum of your right hand just stopping, that coin will pretty much be in the spot it needs to be. So again, we're here, come here, show this nothing. Now we're gonna produce this coin by allowing it to be hidden by the angle of the left fingertips. So you're gonna come into the left hand, squeeze, and the coin is produced. Now you see this move done a lot these days, and uh, it's actually a Chris Korn move. I think it's called the Korn production. So a lot of people do it, but I don't think a lot of people know where it came from. So 
So that's just a little side note. Over here, coin is hidden from view. And it's just being rotated into the right fingertips. Under cover of the left finger. So now you're in position to do any kind of retention vanish you've been working on. Uh, I use my rolling retention, which I taught on a video uh, earlier in this channel, so go check that out. When the coin is produced, I give it a little twirl, and I'm turning my palm up. So I'm showing this face, and then I'm coming here, and allowing it to rest on the side of the middle finger, just being supported by the index finger. Now I'm getting this rolling action, and as soon as it meets the left hand, the left hand closes, and the right hand's going to tip horizontal and away as the left fingertips close. So I'm here and there. And again, uh, go watch that video for detailed explanation of this. But this is the rough move. From here, I'm going to slide that onto balance palm. So I can gesture here. The coin apparently becomes small again as the right hand goes into a back thumb palm. And I'm tilting to my right now. The coin is supposedly small. And I toss that over and it comes back. Now the very last phase we're gonna we're gonna switch or gonna turn the coin into something. So this can be your wallet, a cell phone if it's small enough, a jumbo coin if you want. Uh, I used to just turn the silver dollar into a dollar bill, so I'd have that folded in the eighths in my pocket. So after that's produced from back thumb palm, push it to the fingertips, and we're just going to do a French drop. And I did a, a video on my version of the French drop uh, down in my channel, so go check that out too. Uh, very simply, we're turning a move that is a a take, and we're turning it into more of a put. So I like to show the coin up here as I make a C, and I'm turning that, getting the light on that coin. As I meet the midway point, I'm scooping up, and my left hand is meeting the coin. I'm not coming in behind, I'm just coming in front. At the same time, my thumb lifts away as if it's giving the coin away to my left hand. And this, these two little touches really sell the illusion of that coin being passed. So again, it's, it's not so much a take as it is a put. So over here and there, the right hand drops. This goes into your pants pocket. You say, I wonder if I can fit it through the threads of my, my jeans. So at this point I'm palming an object in my pockets, whether it be a phone, a wallet, or... and my right hand comes with the coin concealed, pretending to pull it through the fabric. And as all attention is here, my left hand comes out with the object. And now we're going to do one last uh, shuttle pass. So the right hand's going to turn as the ring finger clenches the coin. So it comes out of the material, give it a toss, and then the left hand comes up and just lets whatever you're holding give it some movement. At the same time, the right hand comes and it gives that illusion of the change happening. Now grab that object with your dirty hand to help cover any uh, weird looking position you might have. And that's it. So the benefit of practicing a one coin routine as an exercise is you're getting smoother and smoother between transitions from this palm to that palm, this slight to this slight. And it's gonna affect all the magic you do. Of course, we need to practice new slights by themselves 
until you can get, you understand the mechanics of every moment. But quickly after that phase, you need to plug it in to a sequence of moves. So there's no hesitation before and after any one particular move is done. So the main point I want you to take away from all this is to practice those drills, the individual palms and individual slights. But as soon as you can, put that stuff to use. Put it into a larger context and push yourself to create these mini sequences. Your goal should be to achieve flow. So you're giving the audience one picture, one routine where there's continuous movement and no hesitation. At no moment can they see something that's suspicious and lead them to know what's happening. In other words, you're not focusing on one move so much that it detracts at the moment you're performing a larger routine. You want to use the larger routine as the practice itself. And just like in guitar, you start out with the exercises, getting your fingers used to the strings and how much strength it takes to get the right sound, and then getting your fingers in sync. So you can go from one chord to the next chord and get a clean sound and just go up and down those scales and be able to improvise. This is when the creativity starts flowing and the thinking becomes effortless. And this is how you create music or magic. So thank you guys for watching and come back for the next one. I've got a, I found my next giveaway, but that'll be in about a month. And once again, check out the website, rickholcomb.bigcartel.com. I got a couple things up there for sale right now. And it's gonna be a space for me to begin putting up stuff for you guys to buy. And uh, thanks again. <laughs>